To launch the eSign setup, you can begin from either the Forms area or the Documents area of your tile. Choose the form or forms or documents you wish to send to eSign to set up for your signers to sign. Choose the eSign command from the menu, Work with Forms or Work with Documents, or the individual eSign icon located above the Forms edit box or to the right of the document name in the Documents area. The first thing that you will need to do is identify the people who will sign in this session by checking the boxes to the left of their name or names, and then clicking Continue. In step one of the setup, you'll need to give the session a title. This is also the subject line of the email that the signer will receive. You may add an email message if you choose. This email message will display to all signers in the session. Under Signer Sequencing, the default setting is to send to one signer at a time in order. This is adequate for most situations and certainly if you're going to have two signers sharing the same email address. You can also send the session to all signers at once. The system will combine their signatures on the final document when the signing has been completed. You can also sign in this session if you need to sign any documents. Other options include send CC email final documents as an attachment. If you check this box and put an email address in the CC email box, a signing completed notification will be sent to the addressee and the documents will be attached as PDFs instead of located in a link. Click Next to go to the next step. In Step 2, you'll see your signers. You can change the order in which the documents are signed by clicking on the menu to the left of the signer's name and choosing a different number. Keep in mind that this does not change where they sign on the documents, only who signs first, second, third, fourth, etc. To the right of the signer's name is an edit pencil under Actions. Click on this to edit your signer. You can change the name or the email address. You can also add a method of authentication. There are three methods available to you. Password, which you make up and communicate by another means to your signer. SMS, is a text-based authentication. You enter the signer's 10-digit mobile number. When they receive their invitation, they'll be prompted to add the first six digits. Then they will receive a code by text message that they need to put into the, the screen before they'll be allowed to sign. KBA is knowledge-based authentication. This comes with a price tag of $3 per signer, which you will pay at the end of the setup. KBA constructs questions that the signer needs to answer correctly in order to be able to sign their documents. Other options in the signer information box include signing in person when your signers sign on your device at an appointment you'll need to use signing in person and a method of authentication. You can also add signer notes. This gives you the ability to send an email message to only that signer. Disable edit name takes away the ability to change the name. Document review forces the signer to scroll through all the documents before they will see any locations for them to sign. If you make any changes to the signer information, click Save at the bottom of the box. Click Next to go to your next step. Between steps 2 and 3, when you send forms to eSign, you will need to designate who signs where on the forms. So you will need to assign signer roles in this interim step. Click on the menu and choose the name of the signer who will sign in that location on those particular documents. Please note that some documents are generic in nature and may say client instead of buyer or seller. You may also find that you have documents that have places for both buyer and seller when you do not represent both 
sides of the transaction and are not having them both sign at the same time, please leave those locations blank. Click Next and you come to Step 3. In Step 3 you'll see the forms or documents that you added to the session. You can change the order in which the documents are signed by clicking the menu to the left of the document name and choosing a different number. This rearranges the order. All the way to the right of the document you'll see an edit pencil. This opens up the document name and you can edit the name. Click on the arrow to update the name. You can also add documents that you have saved on your computer by clicking on Add Files. In the Upload Files box, choose from Local Disk, your computer, or one of three cloud storage systems, Dropbox, Box, or OneDrive. To find a document on your computer, click on Local Disk and then navigate to wherever that document is saved on your computer. When you locate the document, click on the document name, then click Open, and the document will be uploaded to your signing session. An alternate workaround is to send the document to the tile using the email address on the front of the tile. When the document appears in the documents area of the tile, send it to eSign from there. Click Next to advance to Step 4. Step 4 has two options, either Actions on the left-hand side of the page or Markups on the right. Scroll to see your documents and the signing locations that have already been placed. If you have added document to the session, you will need to add signing locations. Verify your signer and the menu at the top of the screen and then click, drag, and drop signature or date fields onto your document. If you have a second signer, choose that person's name from the menu and then follow the same pattern of clicking, dragging, and dropping the fields that you need onto the document. There is a red X to delete if you need to remove a field and a gear that will give you properties. You can add signature initials, date or time, a form field, drop-down menu, checkbox, or radio button. Markups give you the ability to add text, strike through, underline, highlight, or checkmark to the document. Click, drag, and drop the field you wish to add. In the case of the text box, you can start typing. The text will automatically wrap if there is more text than the width of the box. You can hover over the edge and when you see the arrows, click and drag to increase or decrease the width of the box. The same is true for the strike through. When you place it over the text that you wish to strike through, hover over the edge, then left click and drag to lengthen or decrease the length of the strike through. Markups can also be rotated. Grab the circle with an arrow and drag to rotate it. Markups are different from signature, initials, date and time fields in that when you move on to the next step or click on Save Markup Progress, you will receive a warning telling you that markups have been added which will modify the original document and this action cannot be undone. Once markups are added and saved, they are fixed on the document and cannot be deleted or moved. You will have to confirm by saying yes or no. If you add markups to contractual documents, please add fields for your clients to initial those changes. If you do not wish to use the markups that you placed, please click on the X before you leave Step 4. Going on to Step 5, we have the ability to preview the entire session and the, see where the clients will sign on the documents. At any time in the setup, you can click on Previous 
or click on any number to go to a different step. Moving on to step six, you have another opportunity to add an email message to all signers. When you click next in step six, it sends the invitation to the first signer in your signing session, and you will see signing session information. This information is always available to you in the eSign area of the tile. Upon completion, the signing session status will change to completed and documents will be delivered to the tile.